I'm currently in the most random place to film a vlog. I'm at Central School in one of their rehearsal rooms or private practice rooms and I'm waiting for my audition which should be happening in about one and a half hours. You can hear all these people sing, I hope you can still hear my voice too. So these are the practice rooms downstairs that we can use to warm up and I have warmed up, I've done a normal vocal warm up, singing warm up, done my songs, done my monologue, so I'm ready and now I'm just like what shall I do with the next one and a half hours? And I thought because you guys have been sending me tons of questions about auditioning, preparing your audition material, I could talk you through that because that's what I've been doing for the past few weeks, months. So let's do it. Um, if you don't know me, hello, hello, my name is Lottie and this is my channel all about drama school and musical theatre. So if you want to know what's going on on the West End or how I'm doing in drama school and all the information about auditioning and all that jazz, <laughs> make sure to subscribe now. Now, let's talk about audition prep. So, for Central, I had to prepare two songs, a monologue, I had to write an essay, and I will also be interviewed. And there will be a dance call and drama call, like a drama workshop. Um, but we're going to talk about the preparation bit. So let's start with the basics. Whenever you're doing a monologue or songs, you need to know the entire story of the show that it's from. And you need to know the dramatic storyline of your character. You need to have a backstory for your character. You need to know the dramatic function of the monologue or song. So what's happening? How is it changing the story? How is it telling the story? What were the preceding circumstances? What's going to happen after? Or what do you want to happen? What are your obstacles? What do you need to overcome? What is your objective? What is the goal that you're going for? Why are you speaking? Why are you saying this monologue? And a song is basically a monologue. So why are you saying these things? And not only the text or the song as a whole, but like literally every line. What is the objective of every line? Why do you say them? And if you know these things, you will be convincing. You will have a story to tell. You will push the story forward by what you're doing and you will affect your partner. I mean, you ought to have an imaginary partner on stage, even though it's literally just you. But imagine that you're telling this to your mother, your brother, your lover, your teacher. My monologue is to a teacher and obviously there will not be a teacher, but I will be seeing the reactions of the teacher in my mind, in front of my inner eye, and I will be reacting to those and trying to affect the teacher. So those are the main things. Um, those are kind of the research that you will have to do before and um, that will come from the show itself. But there are many, many, many more other things that you will be able to do because obviously if you have a dramatic love song, if you have a story about someone dying, or even my monologue, I'm doing Sally Brown from You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, and Sally is six years old. So obviously I'm not six years old. And maybe what I'm saying, I can't really relate to. So I use an acting method called the magic if. For the magic if, you literally ask yourself the question, what would I do if I was in that situation? How would I react? And you put yourself into that situation. But then there's substitution as well. If you haven't been in that situation, if nobody's ever died in your family, or you haven't had a heartbreak like that, can you substitute that? Can you think about your dog being ill? Can you use characters in a film? Can you remember moving away from your friends? Can you remember a breakup? Can you remember your sister's illness? Something that made you feel these emotions. And then you can substitute. So whenever you're singing or talking about someone dying, you actually think about your sister being ill. And you just use the words of the monologue of the song. You know what I mean? That's something I really use. So I have this song about poisoning pigeons in the park and I want this other person to poison pigeons in the park with me. Obviously, that's something I've never done. So I'm just thinking about asking a really popular girl to be in my vlog because that makes me slightly uncomfortable but also slightly excited. The stakes are high. I really want her to say yes. And I have the exact same emotions that my character has when she wants to poison pigeons in the park. And that's how substitution works. Um, obviously when 
when the panel asks you about your objectives and when the panel asks you about your backstory, don't tell them your secrets, don't tell them how you're using substitution, tell them your character's storyline. Yeah, very often there's a chance that they'll ask you about your backstory, that they'll ask you about the function of the song or monologue, that they'll ask you about your relationship to others in the scene, or they'll actually make you change them. So be prepared to talk about those and be prepared to make alternative choices. Um, yeah, the same thing counts for Shakespeare. Um, with Shakespeare, one of the methods I like to use is to say the monologue in contemporary language or your native language if it's not English. Um, think about what you're actually saying because the words can be very difficult. Know the full storyline. Think about whether you can use substitution because nowadays you maybe won't be talking about becoming a princess or a king anymore, but you might want to become... Um, I don't know, get a job and talk very passionately about that. So substitution or get, get into drama school, get into drama school. Um, so substitution will work with the circumstances that you really can't relate to. But remember to know the circumstances in the play as well, as well as your backstory and your character analysis. And a really nice little extra is does your character have a physicality? Does your character have mannerisms or a tick that you don't have that you could use for them? So I have this song, I'll Be Here, from the musical Ordinary Days, and my character, Claire, has lost her husband. And whenever I feel nervous, I will be touching the finger on which I used to wear my wedding band, my wedding ring. Um, and then when the wedding ring is mentioned in the song much later, I think, I hope people will get it. So yeah, those are my tips for preparing monologues and songs. I hope that was helpful. This was just a crazy rumble <laughs> um, an hour before my audition. But that's what I've been doing during the last few months. I've been analyzing characters, backstories, creating substituting backstories, um, creating physicalities for my characters. I know everything about my characters, their relationship to others, what their favorite food is. Um, what their favourite film is, what they do during their free time, what they don't like, who they don't like. And all of that just really helps me to step in their shoes. Speaking of shoes, I find it helpful to change my physicality to literally bring in shoes. So for the Poisoning Pigeon song, I'm going to be a wannabe posh lady in the 50s. Brought my character shoes because automatically they'll give me the posture of a civilized lady in heels. So that helps too. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to see you soon. Keep your fingers crossed for my audition. I've got a few more coming up, so let's hope they like what I do too. And I'll see you soon, Tuesdays and Fridays. And if you like musical theatre and drama school content, make sure to subscribe.